All right, you guys, so we just went over all of my face brushes, which you can see back there. Now we're moving into my eye brushes. You guys know that eye makeup is my favorite, favorite part of makeup, always has and always will be. So I have a plethora of different eye brushes. I have a lot that look similar. Um that do the same thing, but there are a few standout brushes that are different from the rest that I think everyone should own. And I think that in my collection, I have a few essential brushes. I have multiples of them, but like there are certain ones that I think everyone needs to own. First is a fluffy brush. So I have, let's see, I have a lot of fluffy brushes and, um, I'll talk about these three first. So these are at three completely different price points. I have Sonia Kashuk, which you can buy at Target. I have the Sephora collection, which is this blue. And then the Laura Mercier ponytail brush is this last one. If I were to say, do not spend your money on one of these three, I would say, do not spend your money on this Laura Mercier. It sheds. It's way too big. It has... It used to come with a point. Why I bought it was because on the website and in every picture I saw it had this amazing taper right to a point and that's how it came but after washing it one time it ends up looking just like any of these other fluff fluffy brushes so um I think everyone needs a fluffy brush this was a type of brush that was missing in my collection for a long time I first got the Sonia Kashuk one this one is probably around five dollars at most like seven dollars this is an awesome brush i love this more out of the three of these this is the one i love the most and probably would want more of um but any fluffy brush is awesome for just putting that crease color down that you need to have like that transition like blending shade you need a fluffy brush like this to do that job so i have three of these which is I think not even enough, but um, you really need to only start out with one, and I would say get the Sony Kashuk if I were to recommend any of them to you. This brush I really love. This is from Target. I don't think they make this one anymore. It was the up and up, like, generic Target brand, and it's just like their crease brush. I love this brush because it's really, like, dense. It doesn't lose its shape when you're blending, um, and why I'm, like, pressing down on it is... That's kind of like how I tell if it's going to hold up while I'm blending. These ones, like, oh my god, I can't even see. These ones, like, are more flimsy and not as dense as a brush like this that really will hold its shape. I love this. I wish that they still sold this. Now they have, like, all duo fiber, like, synthetic brushes in the Up and Up line, but I love, love this brush and if somehow you could still find it, I would say buy it. I wish I could buy more, um, but I only have one and I really like it for just like putting down a color or blending the edge. It's really nice for like just putting that last transition color right on the edge of your, like between your transition or like your crease color, your crease color and your brow. This is what I really, really love it for. This brush is one of my new loves. This is the um, Sephora Crease Shadow number 73 brush. And it's hard to focus. There we go. Um, this is what I wanted the Laura Mercier ponytail brush to be. It comes to that beautiful, beautiful point and it stays that way. It has stayed that way through washing it. It's amazing. This price, the price point of this is perfect at $16, which is way less expensive than the Laura Mercier one. It has really nice hairs to it, and I just love that point. I use this a lot for if I want to, like, put something in the deepest part of my crease, um, but still blend it out. This is amazing for it, and I want to buy more because I, I look for this brush, and there are certain brushes I look for specifically, and this is definitely one of them. I have a few e.l.f. brushes, and as you can see, this one is losing its hairs a little bit. Um, these are some of my oldest brushes. I've had these for years and years. This one is taped up and is all gross. This is the um, Essential Crease, and this is the um, eyeshadow brush. Um, I use these from time to time. I don't use them a lot, but for a beginner in makeup, 
you should buy these brushes. These are a dollar. They do the job so well. There's not a huge variety in the e.l.f. line as far as brushes go, um, but these are two essential brushes I think anyone would get use out of, and still I sometimes reach for them, for them but I don't reach for them over my other brushes anymore. This is an awesome brush. This is the Sonia Kashuk number 110. This is actually their synthetic concealer brush, but I watched a ton of Jaclyn Hill videos like when she, she first started, and she always used a MAC, was it 224 or something? A brush that looked exactly like this. A really, really stiff, thin, synthetic, yellow-haired brush to pack on color onto her lid. And so I went to Target because I didn't want to really spend like 25 to 30 dollars on a brush at the time. I have done that plenty of times before, but that day I didn't want to. Um, and I found this Sonia Kashuk brush, and this does the job so well. It just pack, pack, packs that color on the lid. It picks up pigment so nicely. Like any sort of shadow that you can't, that's kind of falling all over the place, or you just need to have a really like dense brush this type of brush will do the trick so nicely so i love this one and really i can't recommend sony kashuk enough she makes amazing brushes this is an Toki Doki angled brush. I use this occasionally, not too much. It's super, super, super thin, which I love. Um, and I keep it around because you never know when you'll want to do gel liner with an angled brush or do like your eyebrows or something, but it's not one that I reach for a lot. This is the e.l.f. contouring eye brush. This came in a kit that I bought from e.l.f. years and years and years ago, but I love this brush because it comes to a point. It's nice and small. If I compare it against the um, Sephora one, it's way, way smaller than the Sephora, but it still comes to that nice point, which I really love. I love this for putting shadow into my inner corner. I like this for the crease or blending the like edge of my shadows. Basically, I use all my brushes for almost everything, but I really, really like this um, eye contouring brush, and I wish that e.l.f. would sell this, because I would buy like a, a hundred of them. Okay, these are brushes you need, and I try not to say that you need a lot of things, because I don't think that every person would benefit from everything that everyone likes. But these Louise Young LY38 and LY38B brushes, I think would be an amazing investment for any eyeshadow lover. On the left is the LY38, and on the right, the smaller one, is the LY38B. And as you can see, they are amazingly tapered. They are so incredibly nice. They are all hand cut and um, have like natural hairs to them. They are just amazing for crease work. If you have hooded eyes or difficult to like, if you find it difficult to do your crease for like smoky eyes or just a normal everyday look, you should really try First, try the LY38, which is the bigger of the two, but it is a nice size. It fits perfectly into my crease because of that point, and that point will find your crease, and it will put the shadow down exactly where you want it, and then all of these amazing shorter bristles will blend it for you. It is amazing what this brush can do. So I would say start with the LY38. Then, if you love that and want more precision, try out the LY38B, which is the same thing, but just a lot thinner and smaller. And this is amazing for doing a smoky eye, really getting into that crease and chiseling out your outer corner, or even smoking out your lower lash line, putting shadow into the inner corner, putting shadow on the lid. You can do everything with these brushes, but the shape and the quality of them is what really stands out to me. And even though you can do everything with this brush, not every brush can do what this can. It can't, not every brush is this thin, but yet dense so that it places the color and buffs it at the same time. Louise Young, you are amazing and I want you to be in my family because ugh, I just love you. And um, 
These are my only brushes from her that I have, but I can't recommend them enough, and I want to try way, way more. Um, but these are fantastic, and you need them. You really, really, really do. Okay, I have two Sigma brushes, and um, I have the Blending E36 and the Pencil E30. The Pencil brush was also a Jaclyn Hill inspired, and then the Blending E36 was one that I just thought seemed interesting and unlike anything I've ever seen. So the Pencil brush is just a typical pencil brush. It's very nice and dense, and it's good. I didn't have a pencil brush before, so I'm glad that I have it, but is it worth that extra money that Sigma charges you and for the extra shipping and stuff? No, I wouldn't say so. Just buy one from Sonia Kashuk, but it is nice, and um, I'm glad that I have a pencil brush. The E36 blending is a super, super small, very flimsy, fluttery, not dense at all blending brush. So I like this for in my inner corner, and I also like this to apply a transition color right to the edge of my like blending shade. So um, in between my transition or like my blending shade and my brow, I like to just add a little bit of something. Um, or in my crease, if I just want a little bit of definition, but I don't want it to be as precise as the LY38B can be. Um, you can tell that they're a similar shape and size, um, but this Sigma one is very flimsy and the um, the um, Louise Young is much more like dense. So um, just depending on what I am going for with my look, I might reach for the Sigma one. Pretty much I always reach for the Louise Young, but at some times I do reach for the Sigma. I haven't used it a lot to make it worth it, um, but it's okay. I just don't think that it's really doing a great job for me. It's like not that awesome. Okay, I have one Delium Tools brush. This is the 776. I bought this because I read reviews that this was exactly like the MAC 217, and although it has a similar shape, at least the one I have is very, very, very dense and kind of scratchy. So I use this solely for blending out the edge of my eyeshadow. If I have like too much on that outer like corner or I want it to be a specific shape, I will pick up this brush and just really, really buff out that edge of my eyeshadow. And it does a great job, and I'm really glad that I have this because at some times you need a really super dense brush to do that and just really get down and dirty and blend out that edge that you like totally effed up or something. Um, but I wouldn't repurchase this or anything. It's I am happy that I have it, but... I, it's not like the MAC 217. The MAC 217 is incredible, and I love it, and, um, oh my god, this is an amazing brush. So you also, you eyeshadow lovers, should really try a MAC 217. Yes, it sheds a little bit, but I, I totally look past that because of the fluffy factor and how, like, nicely it just it places color, it blends color. You can do basically your entire eyeshadow look with this if you just want like a smoky, diffused, or natural look. It is amazing. I also have the Sephora Professional, what is this one? Oval Blending Brush. And this is a total, total dupe for the MAC 217. Like this is exactly, exactly the same. Well, um, I reach for these interchangeably. To me, they are exactly the same. They do the exact same things. They're the same, um, like, hair material. At least I'm, I'm not a hair, a brush hair expert. But to me, they do everything exactly the same, and I reach for these totally interchangeably. I would recommend the Sephora one because it sheds less. But the MAC 217, if you want to be a total... YouTube makeup snob. You need the MAC 217 because everyone and their freaking mom talks about it on here. Um, and it's just awesome to like have one. So either one of these I would recommend. Um, but if you want to be a snob, definitely get the MAC. But I think having more than one is essential because you will reach for it all the time. Okay, I have a bunch of Real Techniques eye brushes. And basically the only the only thing I use Real Techniques eye brushes for is cream shadow. 
I think that they're okay brushes, but their standout brushes to me, like I have said before, are their face brushes. I think that synthetic eye brushes are okay. They have their place for, like, putting down a cream shadow. But other than that, I, I would rather choose any of these other brushes that I have already shown you to put on powder shadow. But for cream shadow, I always reach for one of these four. So I have the Essential Crease Brush, this purple one, the Duo Fiber um, Eye Brush, which is pointless in my opinion. I, I'm almost tempted to throw this one out because it is really pointless. Um, and then these two, which came in NYX picks, the Base Shadow, which is very, very similar to the MAC 217 in like terms of shape. Um, they're very, very similar, um, but I still prefer the MAC 217 for the bristles. Um, so the base shadow or this angled shadow brush. My favorites out of these are the base shadow and the essential crease brush. I love both of these a lot, um, but any of these I will reach for when I'm doing my cream shadow after my eye primer. Um, so I will just buff out my cream shadow with any of these and uh, I'm good to go. Okay, not too many left, you guys. I have another one, another Sony Kashuk brush. This is the number 116 and this is just a really, really dense like dome brush. I am not sure what this one is called, um, but it'll be listed down below. And this is also good for cream shadow, but the difference between these like these Real Techniques ones and the Sony Kashuk one that I have, the Real Techniques brushes that I have, the eye brushes, are much less dense. So they just really diffuse the, the cream shadow and just make it look really pretty. And the Sony Kashuk one, while I like it, it just applies a really thick layer of it, which I personally don't like the look of. So while I like this brush, for cream shadow. Mostly I like it for putting on shadow on my lid or um, really buffing something into my crease. I don't reach for this one a lot anymore. I used to use this all the time, but not so much anymore. Two of my very oldest and dearest brushes are these two Sephora brushes. Um, I don't know what they're called. All the writing is worn off. I love these to pieces and um, it's just like a small I think this one is called the Medium Shadow, this one that my thumb's on, and then this is like the Smudger Brush. They have held up so nicely. I have had these since high school, and like you guys know, I'm graduated from college now. So I just really, really love these. They do the job perfectly. I reach for them. Not as often as I used to, of course, because now I have all of these other brushes, um, but I really do love these, and they're such amazing quality. I will never get rid of them until they're like falling apart if that ever happens. Um, but this is why I really stand behind Sephora brand brushes because of how well these have done for me over the years. And I just love these for a multitude of things. I love this smudger brush for like my upper lash line or my lower lash line. Um, and I love this um, medium shadow for just placing on color or doing my inner corner, um, but mostly for placing color. So I love those. Okay, this is a Laura Mercier brush that I really love. This is the Secret Camouflage brush. This is intended for her Secret Camouflage concealer. As you can see, the tip of it is all jacked up and gross looking, but it is completely clean. It was originally all this like yellowy color. It's the same sort of um, like bristles as this synthetic concealer brush from Sony Kashuk. I don't know what they're called, um, but that's like the type that these are. And this literally is the best brush for gel liner because of that point. I'm pretty sure that's why. The shape of it and especially that point because you will get your gel liner on this brush and you will lay this point down on your eye and you will just like slide it and it will make the perfect wing. Like it'll just do it perfectly. I don't know how it does it, but it does it amazingly. I love it so much and it's like the weirdest brush to use for gel liner because it's made for pinpoint concealer, but seriously, it's freaking fantastic. And uh, I wouldn't say like invest in this brush for gel liner, but it seriously is the best gel liner brush I've ever used and it's made for concealer. This is a good gel liner brush. This is the Kala 
um, eyeliner number, what does that say, 108. Um, this is one I got from Marshalls, I think. It's just a super, 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 super thin brush. And this is also awesome for gel liner. I don't love it as much as the Laura Mercier, but there's definitely a time and a place where you want a really thin brush to apply a liner. And when I have that purpose or I need that type of brush, I always reach for this one. Another Sephora brand brush that I love is the Shadow Number no. 26. This is just a really, really small, thin, synthetic brush, and I only use this for inner corner highlight. This is the perfect inner corner highlight brush for me. It just gets right in there. It's nice and small, and it just places the highlight amazingly and like really intensely. So I reach for this when I want an intense highlight, but I only ever use this brush for inner corner highlight. Okay, and then I have, oh, I forgot some brushes over here. These two brushes came in a set that I got from Five Below. The rest of the brushes sucked, but these two are awesome. They're just super small. I don't know how to even show you how small they are. Um, here's the MAC 217. This is how small these freaking brushes are. They're so tiny. And I always use these brushes for buffing shadow on top of my eye like on my liner on my upper lash line. I basically always set that with a shadow and I always use these brushes and since they're shorter I put them in my Nutella jar. So that's why they're there. And then this um, Real Techniques eyeliner brush. This was another one that was exclusive to the Sam's or the NYX pick set from this um, this Christmas. This is a super 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 thin angled brush and I love this for my eyebrows. It works perfectly in them. I think that it would be fine for eyeliner but since I have brushes that I already like for liner this is awesome for my eyebrows because it's super thin and I love it so I keep that also in there because it's a specific purpose. While I'm at it this is an Eco Tools angled liner brush and this is what I use for my lip brush. I don't have a specific like lip brush, like a lip brush that's made specifically for lips, but an angled brush, like an eyeliner brush, is perfect for putting lip line, like lipstick on. So if you want a lip brush, buy an angled eyeliner brush. Seriously, it works so amazing. You can get that perfect like sharp edge and um, so I always use this Eco Tools one for my lips when I want to. Okay, you guys, I've been talking for a really long time about eye brushes. This video will be one of my longer ones in this series, but um, I just had so much to talk about, and I just love talking about eyeshadow and, like, eye brushes. So um, I hope that you guys have enjoyed these videos. I hope that this was somewhat helpful, and maybe you'll get a new brush out of it or stay away from a certain brush. Let me know what you think, and thank you all so much again for watching. I hope that you have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you soon. Bye!